Welcome to the Guided Notes presentation about the nervous system. Today we are working on the Guided Notes titled The Nervous System. If you haven't already gotten them out, pause this video and do so now. Starting at the top of the page, let's look at the functions of the nervous system. It only has two functions, but they're rather important. The nervous system receives information about conditions both inside and outside the body. It processes the information and sends new information out to the body in response to the information from the first function. The nervous system is essentially split into two sections, the central nervous system, or CNS, and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain, spinal cord, and brainstem. It processes all information coming, make, makes decisions, and sends information out to make those decisions happen. The spine is part of the central nervous system because it is more than just an impulse superhighway. The spinal cord actually processes motor responses for reflex reactions. The peripheral nervous system is the network of all of the other neurons throughout the body. The peripheral nervous system is divided further into the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. The somatic nervous system is all the neurons of the peripheral of any type involved in voluntary movement of skeletal muscles. The autonomic nervous system is all of the neurons of the peripheral that are sending or receiving information about the involuntary functions, like heart rate, digestion, and which capillaries are open. You can think autonomic or automatic. Just like there are many different types of muscle tissue, connective tissue and epithelial tissue, nerve tissue is made of many different types of cells. The nerves, spinal cord, and brain are all different types of nerve cells, or neurons. We will focus on the peripheral nervous system's neurons, of which there are three basic types. The sensory neurons, which bring in information about conditions both inside and outside the body. The motor neurons, that are the last step in a signal from the central nervous system getting to muscle cells. And the interneurons, which are the connections the roads between the central nervous system and the motor and sensory neurons in the peripheral nervous system. Now that you're a little more familiar with the types of neurons, let's look back at the, that division of the nervous system. Information comes into the nervous system about something. Let's use both an external and an internal example. Imagine you're lounging around the house and the doorbell rings. The external stimulus of the door, doorbell activates the sensory neurons of your ears, sending the information to the spinal cord and brain via the interneurons. You decide to get up, sending a message back out through the interneurons to the motor neurons and the skeletal muscles. Since this was a conscious choice, this is part of the somatic nervous system. When you are getting up, your blood pressure drops, thanks to gravity, and the baroreceptors in your arteries, a type of sensory neuron detecting pressure, pick up the change. They send the message through the interneurons to the central nervous system, which sends two messages out, one to the heart and one to the arteries. Both messages travel out, the interneurons again, to the motor neurons of the heart and arteries, telling your heart to beat a little quicker and arteries to shrink down a bit, increasing blood pressure. Since you don't get a say in any of this process, this is part of the autonomic nervous system. No matter the function of the neurons, they have similar structures. All neurons have a cell body which contains the cell's organelles. Most neurons have dendrites, which receive some form of impulse or stimulus into the neuron. Neurons have axons, which serve as the interstate of the impulse, and axons end in the axon terminal, which turns the impulse into a chemical signal that then jumps across the synapse. There's a gap in between the two neurons. Here's a diagram similar to the one you have on your guided notes. And these are the, these are the dendrites. 
the cell body, the axon, and the axon terminals. This isn't directly on your guided notes, but if you need to write it down, do so. Neurons don't touch each other. The axon terminal and the dendrite are very close to each other, but they do not touch. The gap between the axon terminal and the dendrite is called the synapse. This video has some technical jargon, but it does illustrate how the nerve impulse travels down a neuron and across the synapse to the next neuron. We're going to be looking at these electrical impulses, these flashes, which are called action potentials, are crossing three neurons in a circuit here. And as we look in higher power, you can see it crosses the synapse, moves on to the next neuron in the circuit, crosses another synapse, finally activates the next neuron in this chain. And if we begin to focus at slower speeds and at higher magnification, we're going to focus on the information transfer at that single synapse. And so there is the dendrite on the right, the synaptic terminal on the left. And as the impulse information comes down, these little green disks are channels in the synaptic terminal that open. They let calcium ions into the nerve terminal. Calcium ions then activate small packets of neurotransmitter, which release their contents into the gap of this synapse. Some of them diffuse away, but others activate receptors on target neurons. They open yet further channels, which let sodium ions in, and so this information transfer propagates from one neuron to the next along these connections. A sensory receptor's dendrites are specialized to receive different type of input than what we just talked about. Your body is able to receive a lot more information than just those five senses you learned in kindergarten. One category is that of chemoreceptors, sensing the presence of different chemicals. Taste and smell sensory neurons are different forms of chemoreceptors, but they're not the only ones you have. Mechanoreceptors sense stimuli that your central nervous system interprets as touch, pressure, sound, balance, and gravity. Thermoreceptors sense temperature. There are two main forms of thermoreceptor. One detects temperatures below your body temperature and one detects temperatures above your body temperature. Nociceptors sense pain input. There are nociceptors detecting chemical agonists, such as capsaicin, the active ingredient in pepper spray. Uh, nociceptors that detect physical stimuli, like crushing pressure or getting cut. And nociceptors that detect temperature, like thermoreceptors, but again are detecting extremes that cause pain. Finally, there are photoreceptors, specialized sensory neurons that detect aspects of electromagnetic radiation, such as intensity and wavelength, color. These are the ones that allow you to see. This concludes this, this installment of our Guided Notes video. We'll see you in class.